everybody. Now we're going to take a look at R12, reference coordinate systems. The two coordinate systems that we're going to be using to reference our directions, especially when we are uh, adding vectors that are perpendicular to each other. Collinear vectors are fairly easy. If you've got two vectors that are horizontal and or two that are vertical and you add them together, the answer is going to be either horizontal or it's going to be vertical. So it's going to be parallel to an axis. So you can use the axial directions to uh, describe the direction of the resultant. However, if you have a perpendicular vector, two ver perpendicular vectors, it's a little different. So we're going to take a look at the two possible coordinate systems that we can use to reference our direction. And the first is the cardinal system. Um, this is what you know is your geographic direction. So let's take a look. First, uh, if we look at our compass rows, uh, on a cardinal system, north is up the paper and south is down the paper. East is to the right and west is to the left. That's how we measure uh, geographic directions or how we uh, position them. Now, let's take a look at what happens if we have vectors in a particular um, quadrant. We'll do one quadrant at a time and it won't take too long. Then we'll look at the Cartesian system. Suppose though that you added, and I'm just going to dot them in so we remember that we're talking about vector addition. Suppose we had two perpendicular vectors and we added them tip to tail. Well, when you do that, you get a resultant that is somewhere between, if you're in the first quadrant, it's somewhere between north and east. Just like this. Now, here's the big trick that everybody needs to learn. Whenever we reference the direction, east and west are both zero degrees. North is 90 degrees and south is 90 degrees. And we always start at zero. That means we always start at the closest horizontal axis. For quadrant one, the closest horizontal axis is the east axis. So we're going to start at east and measure northward. We're going to measure north of the east axis. Okay? We always start from the horizontal. Put your resultant on the origin of the axis. Okay? So here we're going to measure theta r is so many degrees north of east. Okay? Northeast. North of east. Now, do not measure this angle right here. We don't measure east of north. That's not standard convention. Just like New York is not an uh, east northern state. We don't say that. We say New York is in the northeast. We don't say east north. So we always start at the horizontal axis and measure northward from there if it's in the first quadrant. Okay, what if we looked at two vectors that gave us a resultant, there goes the clock again, that is in the second quadrant, just like this one. Now this time, the closest horizontal is not the east axis, it's the west axis. So we start at zero, the west axis, and we're going to measure northward from that. We don't measure the angle next to the vertical. That's a big no-no. All right? We don't measure uh, Washington as being a west-northern state. It's a northwestern state, okay? So north of west, northwestern. So, we're going to measure theta r is so many degrees north of west. Okay, that's how we state the answer. X degrees, whatever it is, north of west. All right. See, this isn't taking too long. You're starting to get the idea, I bet. Let's suppose that we had two vectors that gave us a resultant in the third quadrant. Aha! 
Now notice that the west axis is still the closest horizontal, so we start there at zero. But now we're going to measure southward. So for the direction of the resultant, we would say theta r south of west. Okay, however many degrees south of west. So that's how you would state the direction of your resultant. You'd state the magnitude with the units, and then you'd state, say, at so many degrees south of west. Okay, so always start at the horizontal axis. You're going to measure northward or southward, which brings me to our final quadrant. Suppose you had two vectors that gave you a resultant in the fourth quadrant. Boop, boop. Okay, the closest horizontal is the east axis, which is zero degrees, so we start there and we measure southward this time. So now, when you state the direction of the vector with the magnitude, you would say theta r is so many degrees south of east. Okay, so this is how we state the directions. Don't forget to put the magnitude with it. You've got to have both parts to have the full answer. But that's how we state the direction part. Okay, we always measure from the closest horizontal, north or south, of either the east or west axis. Okay, now that's not so tough, is it? All right, let's look at the Cartesian system. All right. The idea is the same here. We always reference our directions from the horizontal axis. But with a Cartesian system, instead of north, south, east, and west, we actually have the positive y-axis, y-hat, and the negative y-axis, the positive x-axis, and the negative x-axis. So we're going to be measuring from the either the positive or the negative x-axis. Both of those are going to be zero degrees, and this one's going to be 90 degrees, okay? Now, again, if we have two vectors, perpendicular vectors, that place the resultant in the first quadrant, then we're going to start at the positive x-axis and measure around towards 90 degrees, towards the y-axis. So here's the angle for the direction of the resultant. So we would say theta is so many degrees above the positive x-axis. Ta-da! That was so tough, wasn't it? So what if we're in the second quadrant? What do you think we're going to say now? Well, here's zero degrees. So the closest one is negative x. We're going to measure around towards 90 degrees. And now we're going to say theta r is so many degrees above what? The negative x-axis. Okay? If we're in the third quadrant, boom, there we go. We're going to start at the closest horizontal because there's zero, and we're going to measure around towards 90. There's the angle we want to measure, and we would state it as so many degrees below the negative x-axis. All right, and the last one, we have the fourth quadrant. So if this is r, we start at the closest horizontal because that's where zero degrees is. We measure around towards 90 degrees. So now we would state in our answer with the magnitude of the resultant, we would say it's at a direction that's so many degrees below the positive x-axis. Oh, that's so tough, isn't it? These are both so difficult. Now your math teacher would tell you, no, 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 you can't do that. You've got to go 0, 90, 180, 270, 360. And if it's in the fourth quadrant, you've got to add all the measures up around all the way to here. Oh, that's ridiculous. We don't do that in physics. We just measure from the horizontal and be done with it. Isn't that nice? Okay.
So there we go. That's how we use our two coordinate systems. And I hope you'll find it fairly simple idea to use. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.